the broadcast of the regular meeting of the Planning Commission will now begin. Hello everyone and welcome to the regular meeting of the City Planning Commission for Monday, uh, May 10th, 2021. My name is Raya Smiley. I'm the president of the Planning Commission. And I'll be chairing the meeting tonight. As we begin, I want to note that this meeting includes the remote participation by members of the City Council and City staff as was authorized under Minnesota Statute Section 13D21 uh, due, due to the declared um, local public health emergency. Uh, the city will be recording this meeting and will be posting it to the city's website and the YouTube channel. Um, and this meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. At this time, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll so we can verify a quorum is present. Commissioner Baxley. Present. Caprini. Present. Ismaili. Present. Ford. Commissioner Ford. Marwa. Here. Fire. Here. Meyer. Here. Olson. Here. Trigger. Here. Wheezy. Here. Commissioner Ford. There are nine members present. Um, great, thank you. So let the record reflect that the quorum is present. With that, we'll proceed uh, to the agenda. Uh, a copy of it was posted to the city's legislative information management system or LIMS. Uh, we will begin with the acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Planning Commission on April 26, 2021. Do I have a motion to accept these minutes? Commissioner Caprini. Motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. It's been moved. And is there a second? Commissioner Marwell? Second that motion. Thank you. The motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll on that motion. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Caprini. Aye. Ismaili. Aye. Ford. Marwa. Aye. McGuire. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. There are nine ayes. Great, that motion passes and the minutes of the previous meeting are adopted. Our next order of business is to organize the agenda, which again was available on or is available on limbs.minneapolismn.gov. Uh, first off, I am going to propose that we take up item number 12, which is not a public hearing item um, uh, to bring it to the front of the agenda. Uh, and then I will also, for the rest of the items, I will be reading through the agenda numbers and addresses and state whether it's been slated for consent or discussion. Um, consent items are those that will be passed without any discussion by the board or the commission. We will be uh, going with the staff recommendation that is listed on the agenda item under recommended motion um, and any applicable condition that was uh, reflected there. If you do agree with this recommendation, uh, you don't need to do anything, but if you disagree, please speak up so that we put that item for discussion. And if you, um, okay. So then I'm going to, uh, again, propose that item number 12 will be first, um, that we will take that up uh, when we go to the agenda. But um, 
for the rest of the agenda, the um, the items are as follows. So I will be reading through the items again to determine whether they're consent or discussion. Item number four, 950 13th Avenue Northeast. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone to speak against this item or against the staff's recommendation? Anyone? If you're on the line, uh, you can press star six to unmute yourself and um, state that you disagree with that. Okay, item number four is put on consent. Item number five, 500, 504 and 508, 37th Avenue Northeast. Staff is recommending this item also for consent. Is there anyone to uh, is there anyone here to speak against that? Okay, hearing none. Item number five is put on consent. Item number six, 1724 and 1728 Nicollet Avenue. 1727 LaSalle Avenue. Staff is recommending this item also for consent. Is there anyone who is wishing to speak against that? Star six unmutes as well. Okay, hearing none, item number six is put on consent. Item number seven, uh, 3805 40th Street East. Staff is recommending this item for discussion. Item number eight, 1207 Glenwood Avenue. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone to speak against it? Okay, hearing none, item number eight is put on consent. Item number nine, 801 9th Street Southeast. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone to speak against that? Star six, unmute. Okay, hearing none, item number nine is also put on consent. Item number 10, 20, 2837, 2839, and 2843, 11th Avenue. Avenue South, 2834, 2836, and 2840, 12th Avenue South. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone to speak against that? Against the recommendation. Okay, hearing none, item number 10 is put on consent. Item number 11, 3331 Hennepin Avenue. Staff is recommending this item for discussion. Okay, so let's review this. Um, the items number four, five, six, eight, nine, and 10 are slated for consent. And item number, excuse me for a second, um, item number seven and 11 for discussion. Do I have a motion to um, approve the agenda as amended? Commissioner Olson. So moved. Okay, a motion has been made. Commissioner McGuire. Second the motion. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Sorry, this is Mark Bradby here. Um, I wanted to discuss the item number 11. And yes. maybe you noted that. OK, I apologize. Yes, I'll, item number 11 is put again. for discussion. Oh, no worries. Great. Item number Thank 11 you. is put for discussion. We will get to that um, later. And when we get to the item, we'll open the public hearing for it. 
Okay, so back to the motion. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any additional discussion for that? Okay, seeing none, I ask the clerk to please call the roll on the motion. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Caprini. Aye. A smiley. Aye. Ford. Aye. Marwa. Aye. McGuire. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. There are 10 ayes. That motion passes and the agenda has been adopted. Uh, next is the consent item from Committee of the Whole, April 29, 2021. Uh, this is item number 12, Satori Apartments TIF District Plan, uh, West Broadway and Bryant Avenue North. And staff is Bree Golding. Uh, Commissioner Smiley, yes. just to clarify, this was an item that we discussed at Committee of the Whole last week, so this is just a consent item to adopt. You're absolutely correct. I apologize about that. Um, just a clarification, can we just then do item number 12 and the rest of the consent items at, in one motion, or should they be separate? You could add item 12 to the consent motion. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> that clarifies things. I. Um, I apologize for uh, confusing everyone, including myself. Uh, so with that, going to the rest of the agenda, um, our consent items are four items number four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. Do I have a motion? Actually, before I um, uh, ask for a motion, uh, I am opening the public hearing on these items, as I mentioned, items four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. Is there anyone who would like to speak to these items? If you are here on the line, you can press star six to unmute yourself. Okay. Hearing no one, I will now close the public hearing for the consent agenda. And now, do I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda items, which are again items 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 12? Commissioner Olson. So moved. And it's been moved. Commissioner McGuire. Second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Clerk, can you please call the roll on this? Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Caprini. Aye. Ford. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Fire. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. President Smiley. Aye. There are 10 ayes. Thank you. That motion passes. So agenda items 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 12 have been approved if you were here for any of those items. Now we will be moving on to our discussion items. And uh, these are the ones that we will be uh, hearing staff presented. We will be taking, um, we will be taking uh, public hearings for these items, and then we will discuss them further before the commission takes a vote on it. So we will start um, on in the order uh, of the items. Item number seven, uh, 3805 40th Street East, and staff is Lindsay Sillis. Good evening, commissioners. Um, the project for discussion today is at 3805 40th Street East. This is an application by Touchstone Mental Health. Um, there should be a presentation as well that can be pulled up here. 
Um, so this site is an existing building. Um, it's occupied by a two-story church with a footprint of just over 5,000 square feet. Um, the site is less than 10,000 square feet, so it is non-conforming to minimum lot area for a church. The applicant has proposed to establish a community residential facility of 16 beds. There are two applications required to establish this facility, a conditional use permit and a variance to reduce the minimum lot area for a community residential facility from 10,000 square feet to 9,219 square feet. Next slide, please. Uh, here's the site plan of the site. So there are minimal changes um, being proposed to the building itself. The applicant has proposed a small addition on the south side of the building to accommodate required long-term bicycle parking. And they are proposing a large patio along East 40th Street. Um, the other improvements as part of this project are mostly internal. So those include um, uh, reconfiguring the interior layout to accommodate uh, staff offices, bedrooms, kitchens, um, meeting areas, um, other spaces to support the use. And um, this project did come in for a reasonable accommodation to the one quarter mile spacing requirement for community residential facilities, and that was approved administratively on March 16th. Next slide, please. Um, here's just a brief look at the proposed floor plan with the bedrooms. And next slide. And a photo of the church, um, obviously from a little while ago while it was still snowy. And next slide. So uh, I'm just going to give a brief um, synopsis of the staff analysis. So staff finds that the proposal to establish a community residential facility with 16 beds would comply with all the required findings for a conditional use permit and is consistent with the policies in Minneapolis 2040. Um, again, a conditional use permit is something that's allowed by the zoning code as long as certain conditions are met. And um, a community residential facility is essentially um, a um, congregate living use, um, something that um, up is allowed in uh, Uh, lower density districts, and then um, for up to 16 beds does require the conditional use permits. Um, this use also requires a variance minimum lot area. So this is an existing building. It's an existing church. We have been seeing many, um, many of these existing churches, especially on smaller sites, uh, have been finding it difficult to find new users. So the minimum lot area for church is 10,000 square feet. The minimum lot area for a community residential facility with 16 beds is also 10,000 square feet. The site is currently non conforming to minimum lot area. Um, the existing non conforming use of the site and the size of the lot are unique circumstances that were not created by the applicant. So staff did find that there is a practical difficulty in, that exists in complying with the ordinance. And um, the Proposed use as a, com a community residential facility would be reasonable and consistent with surrounding uses. Um, I know that there have been some concerns raised about parking. The parking requirement for a church is 39 parking spaces. Um, so the, the building would be considered to have non-conforming rights for 39 parking spaces. The proposed use of a community residential facility only has a parking requirement of four parking spaces. So while the applicant is not proposing any parking, the site is becoming more conforming to the parking requirements as they, um, as the parking requirement for a church is much more substantial. Um, in addition, uh, just another comment that the, the facility will be staffed at all times um, and uh, it, it will be providing short-term uh, services to, to individuals with um, mental illness. And so uh, next slide, please. Staff is recommending approval of both applications and uh, I am happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you for the presentation, Lindsay. Uh, does the commission have any questions for staff? Any questions? Well, 
If not, I don't see anything. Um, I will now open the public hearing uh, for this item. Again, this is item number 7, 3805 40th Street East. Is uh, the applicant here to speak about this item? If you are, please press star six to unmute yourself and then state your name and address for the record. Is Ellie Skelton on the line? Okay, I hear, I see that um, Ellie Skelton may not be on the line who has been identified as the applicant. Is there anyone else associated with the applicant team? who would be wanting to speak to this item? OK. Not seeing that, I will continue with the uh, list of registered speakers um, that we've received. Uh, next person uh, or first person registered is uh, Sam Smith. If you are on the line, please press star six, state your name and address, and then continue with your comments. Is Sam Smith on the line? Mm. Sam Smith. OK. I hear, I see that Sam Smith is on the line again. If you are, please press star six to unmute yourself and then continue with your name, address and comment. OK, we will continue uh, with our list and then we'll come back. Uh, next registered speaker is Joe Wagner. If you're on the line, please press star six and continue with your name, address and comment. Is Joe Wagner on the line? Okay, hey. I hear that Joe Wagner is also on the line. Again, uh, please press star six. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I see that our applicant is also on the line, but can't be heard. Can the tech team please um, confirm that? Okay, we yeah. may be having issues. Yes. President of Smiley, I would yes. also for any of the uh, people who are trying to speak who might be able to hear me, it might also be worth making sure that your phone is not muted. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes callers mute their phones right away and forget that they also need to unmute their phones. So that might be worth Thank trying. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yes, uh, so as um, as was mentioned. In addition to pressing star six to unmute yourself on the line, you may need to also unmute your phone. So if you have cell phones or any other kind of phone that has a mute button on its own, that also needs to be unmuted. Um, okay, let's continue with the list of registered speakers. Hopefully one of them can can speak and uh, at the same time I ask that the um, IT team just kind of make sure that we don't have an issue on our end. Um, next registered speaker is Linda Lillard. Linda, if you're on the line, um, please press star six and unmute your own phone too and continue with your name, address and comments. Hmm. Okay, Linda Lillard is also on the line. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, okay. Next speaker, registered speaker is Margaret Enstead. Enstead? I apologize if I'm saying your last name incorrectly. Margaret, if you're on the line, 
please press star six to unmute yourself. And you may also need to unmute your phone separately and then continue with your name, address, and comments. Okay. Hmm. I feel like it's very odd that all of our registered speakers can't <laughs> seem to unmute themselves. Um, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the oh. list and yes. Who is speaking? Hi. Hi. This is Ellie Skelton. Oh, great. I'm from Touchstone Mental Health. I've been trying to get in, so I'm not sure what the technical difficulties. I hung up on the landline and called on my cell phone. Okay, well, thank you so much for sticking with it. I uh, really appreciate sure. it. Um, please go ahead. Uh, I mean, you mentioned your name and you're the applicant, so please go ahead with um, any uh, comments that you have on this item. Sure. So, um, I, my name is Ellie Skelton. Thank you so much for uh, considering our application. Uh, Touchstone Mental Health was started in 1982 by social workers at the University of Minnesota, and we wanted to be able to provide adults with mental illness options for community integration and supportive environments outside of institutional settings. Often a barrier to building community-based housing and treatment services for people with mental illness is negative public attitudes towards people with mental illness. Often that's due to stigma. We have seen time and again, once we have settled in a new neighborhood, our neighbors' attitudes about willingness to live near someone with a mental illness improves. As you can see by the support letters associated with our application, many of our current neighbors have expressed positive regard for our programs. We have been in the Seward neighborhood for almost 30 years. We are moving that location, hopefully to this church, because our current building isn't accessible, there's lots of stairs, doesn't have individual bedrooms for the residents, and they don't have adequate lighting in the basement offices. We're very excited to be able to uh, improve the quality of the program. Our programs are not associated with a decrease in property values or an increase in criminal activity. Quite the contrary, having staff there 24 seven makes us a really good community partner on the block. We work hard to be good neighbors, add value to the community, reduce stigma associated with mental illness, and advocate that individuals with mental illness are not discriminated against. We have been looking for space for almost two years to locate in a residentially zoned property, and it is difficult to find space in the city of Minneapolis. You may remember I had a conditional use permit denied um, at an apartment um, a few months ago. We were excited when we found this church for sale because it can be remodeled to have 16 individual rooms and there is an existing elevator. The building is not occupied, which was the problem with the last program we found, or apartment building we found, so no one is being displaced. So we're very excited about that. The building has a lot of natural light and our architect has drafted plans that connect the outdoor to the interior of the building. It is close to Minnehaha Avenue, which is great for bus service near restaurants, clinics, and parks. It is in the, the community many of our residents currently live in and want to return to. So we hope that you are able to approve our application and we um, certainly are excited to be a good neighbor in the Howe neighborhood. Thank you, Thank you. so much. Thank you. Um, is there any, are there any questions from the commission for the applicant? Any questions Hello. from the commission? Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Who, who is speaking? This is uh, Joe Wagner. Sorry, I had some te technical difficulties getting connected. I, yes. I don't know if it's my turn to talk, but. I, I will get to you in just one second, just making sure that no one else has a question for the applicant, if you don't mind. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, it was okay. kind of technical, so. Yeah, yeah, I apologize about that. Okay, yep. well, seeing no one uh, in the chat from uh, the commission having a question for the applicant, um, uh, Joe Wagner, please go ahead now that you've been connected and please continue yeah. with your name, address, and uh, comment. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. I um, had some technical difficulties pressing star six, apparently. Um, I had to redial in. Um, we appreciate in that. To get it to work. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm Joe Wagner. I'm at uh, 39, uh, 3952 39th Avenue South, Minneapolis, 55406. Um, 
And so I wanted to, I had attached a document that I just wanted to kind of briefly go over with the commission, um, if that's okay with you folks. Um, Please go ahead. The, okay, what's that, I'm sorry? Please go ahead. Okay. Um, so I am uh, some, my, myself and several are objecting to the minimum lot area variance. Um, it doesn't appear that this particular property is uh, unique. And for a variance, it has to be something unique to the property, such as, you know, uh, you know, this weird shaped lot or something like that. And we were able to find several uh, specifically churches in um, that were also in BFI one and R1A zones that were below this minimum requirement. Um, and so that kind of shows that it's not unique. Um, so, so we're five other churches in similar R1A zones that were slightly different, but where the, um, but where the ordinance would, would be the same type of requirement. And they were all under the 10,000 square feet um, requirement. So, so I do not believe that that is a unique circumstance. Um, additionally, the code requires for a appropriate transition area um, which is, you know, the use of landscaping, screening, and other site improvements uh, for the area. And when the lot size is too small, that can negatively affect, you know, the ability to uh, create an appropriate transition area. Um, and then also I'm objecting to the conditional use permit um, uh, due to off-street parking and traffic. Um, <clears throat> So this church was built before 1963, so it was kind of exempt from uh, the parking requirements. But since there's a change in use, um, and I believe they kind of already went over this a little bit. They, um, oh, what's that? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought I heard something. Um, so since they're changing the use. Um, there's uh, kind of, they have to compare the previous use and the old use. Um, and although technically, yes, there's, um, you know, by the definitions in the code, a, a decrease in use. In this particular case, um, since it was a church, it's uh, typically only had parking related problems, you know, Sunday and maybe, you know, a few other times of the week. Um, the new use proposes um, in their document, you know, that they're going to have um, up to, you know, they had listed four different types of, of professionals who would be would be working here, um, and the floor plan shows a significant area dedicated to office and um, uh, conference areas. Um, which is concerning because um, it's starting to kind of look like an like an office, um, and we're an office without parking. Um, so uh, I think it's about like a third of the of the building was purely staff office area. There are five offices and one large office that's the size of three of those offices that they call an open office. Um, so I, I have concerns about, you know, every day there's going to be people filling this office um, with workers, you know, on computers and telephones, um, and that this is going to create kind of a parking problem, um, particularly in the, I know we're not in winter right now, but when the winter comes around, and if there's a bad snowfall, there can be, um, you know, half of the on-street parking can uh, be removed for snow plows, um, which kind of reduces the off-street parking even more. Um, and so, I mean, we're in a BFI 1 R 1A zone, so we're kind of, um, you know, strictly residential low density. Um, 
Um, so we have, you know, we're not a pedestrian oriented overlay zone. We're not in a transit or corridor district, which I believe the current offices are in. Um, the, uh, let's see, um, you know, and then of course there's always considerations for uh, deliveries for supplies. I see that there's two kitchens and a kitchenette. Um, which all of which, you know, having supplies delivered. It's just a very small kind of area with um, a lot of what's going to be pull in a lot of traffic, I, I would, I'm afraid of. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Oh, are you, oh, sorry. I thought you, I couldn't hear you for a second. Please continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, I was just going to, and then I was just going to wrap up with, um, uh, you know, that this, this property, you know, can be used for alternative things that don't require variances, you know, such as, you know, if you were to make it into a three family dwelling, um, no variances would be needed. Um, so it's not like this property can't be used. Um, so um but other than that um i hope you all have a uh, you know fantastic day um, and i hope you all had a great mother's day yesterday um thanks for taking my comments great well thank you so much for uh commenting um the next i'm, I'm going to go back to the list of our registered speakers is sam smith on the line if you are, please press star six to unmute yourself and then continue with your name and address and then your comment. Can folks hear me okay? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Great. Dear members of the Planning Commission, my name is Sam Smith and I'm a Minneapolis resident at 5206 12th Avenue South and the Public Policy Coordinator for the National Alliance on Mental Illness Minnesota Chapter. We are a nonprofit organization that provides education, support, and advocacy for people living with mental illnesses and their families. I'm here today on behalf of NAMI Minnesota to speak in support of offering a conditional use permit for a residential mental health facility operated by Touchstone Mental Health. Minnesota's mental health system is still being built, and there is a significant need to expand access to community-based mental health services. The lack of adequate mental health services leads people with mental illnesses to expensive treatments in an emergency room or hospital, into homelessness, or into the criminal justice system. After 29 years as a good neighbor at their location in Seward, Touchstone must move to this new location to ensure that each resident has their own room and Touchstone staff have adequate office space. Allowing Touchstone to relocate their intensive residential treatment services facility will ensure that people with mental illnesses will continue to have access to this life-changing mental health services as they get back on their feet. One in five people live with a mental illness. They are our friends, neighbors, and coworkers. At NAMI Minnesota, we hear too many stories about people not being able to access the mental health care they need in the community where they live. I urge the Planning Commission to approve the Touchstone Plan, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, our next person is um, Linda Lillard. If you are on the line, please press star six to unmute yourself and then continue with your name and address and then your comments. Is Linda Lillard on the line? If you are and have already pressed star six, you may also need to unmute your phone separately. Can you hear me? Yes, we can Hello? hear you. Oh, I'm on someone else's phone because mine wouldn't, wouldn't connect. Um, okay. I'm Linda Lillard. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, please go ahead with your okay. name, address, Linda and Lillard. comments. Linda Lillard at 3956 39th Avenue South. Um, I helped with the document that Joe Wagner just was speaking of, and I, I just I live directly across from the front doors of the church, um, and so does another neighbor that will probably speak. And it's just a small, you know, single family residential area. We're not 
you know, used to any kind of business or delivery trucks coming and going. And it's just, I feel like a not a good fit at all for this neighborhood. Plus, it seems like there's not enough space for everything that they're proposing for these residents. They're going to put them outside in a small area where, um, you know, it's like, we're going to have to have an interaction because they're directly across the street from us. There's not going to be, it sounds like any sort of partition that, you know, gives them privacy or us privacy from them. And that really infin infringes on what I've been used to living for 30 years in my home. You know, when it was a church, it was, you know, once a week or maybe twice a week that there was traffic and people that, you know, were coming in and out of the church. But now this is going to be an everyday occurrence and it infringes on our privacy as homeowners. And again, we're a small, you know, single family residential area. We're not a business area. So to put a business in the middle of this place is, is just, I don't feel a good fit for the neighborhood or it doesn't seem like it's a good fit for the um, for Touchstone or the residents that are going to be filtering in and out every 30 to 60 days, plus all their family members, all the, you know, staffing, all the deliveries, everything. Um, all in all, that's about all I have to say. I just totally disagree with this. Thank you for your comments. The next person who's registered is Margaret Enstead. Am I saying your last name? even remotely close. If you are on the line, please press star six to unmute. Okay, I I see that Margaret's number is not online. I'll give it one, a few seconds. If you are on the line, please press star six to unmute and then uh, continue with your name and address. Hmm. Okay, well, that is the complete list of our registered speakers. Is there anyone else on the line right now who is wishing to speak on this item but did not register ahead of time? If there is anyone, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name, address, and then your comment. Hi. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. My name is Lisa Buckbaum and I live at uh, 3802 East 40th Street. I own the, I'm an owner occupier of the duplex that is immediately across the street from 3805 East 40th Street. Um, my uh, concerns are really around uh, the vulnerable adult population that is going to be um, unfortunately, uh, put on display um, with the outdoor space that's provided. So uh, my duplex um, is uniquely situated so that it's facing the street, um, side by side duplex, and the church's front door and a small plot of uh, land, the only plot that they have to put anything in is directly across the street. Um, their proposal is to maintain the landscape that there is and maybe put some smaller, shorter bushes um, with a, a paver patio. Um, and I, my concerns are really uh, both for the, the residents themselves feeling that they're put on display because um, we have a lot, we do have a lot of foot traffic and there really isn't a way to provide them any privacy. Um, from a homeowner, and uh, I rely on the income of my duplex. Um, I'm concerned that this will also impact my ability uh, to to rent my duplex, um, seeing as there's no no way that to have any privacy. Um, the pictures that are in the report are essentially taken from my front yard. Um, I do have a couple of side yards, and in fact, I can create privacy with the side yard. Um, but I think my bigger concern is that the space that we are 
looking for is less than the minimum of 10,000. And really, um, there's a lot less because of the offices, but then the outdoor space just really is not conducive to a healing environment that makes people feel safe. Um, and so I would oppose this for that reason, simply because there really isn't a way to create any bit of privacy um, in that yard. Um, and I think that those are my comments. Thank you for considering. Thank you so much. Um, is there anyone else who's on the line who is wishing to speak who did not register ahead of time? If there is, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name and address. I'll give it a few seconds. Anyone else? Okay, well, not hearing anyone else, I will now close the public hearing on item number seven. Is there, yeah, is there any additional discussion or question by the commissioners? Commissioner Meyer. Thank and you. And then Commissioner <laughs> McGuire. Um, I'm very happy that uh, the applicant was able to find a suitable um, space for this. Um, this seems like a very reasonable um, variance with the practical difficulty of having the existing structure um, and, and this puts it to a good reuse. Um, so with that, I'd, I'd like to move approval of items A and B um, with the stated condition consistent with staff recommendations. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. A motion has been made and second, well, not seconded, Commissioner Olson. Second. Okay, now a motion has been made and seconded. Is there any additional discussion? I think Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Meyer stole most of what I was going to say and Commissioner Olson stole my second. So <laughs> I guess I'll just say that um, I'm extremely supportive of this use. I think there's a really big need for it. Um, and <laughs> it's okay, Commissioner Olson. Um, and I think that this will be a great fit and I hope the new residents are really happy in Minneapolis. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Marwa. Yeah, I also just wanted to thank the applicant team for um, coming back to us with a new location for this. I think this building seems very well suited for these needs. And um, I know it was a tough blow in, um, at the last planning commission that they were at. So I thank them again for going back to the drawing board and finding a site that worked. So thank you. I'll be supporting this motion as well. Thank you, Commissioner Marble. Commissioner Olson and then Commissioner Baxley. Yeah, thanks. I just want to, I agree with what everyone else has said so far. Um, I support this and I also just want to say, you know, everyone deserves an outdoor space. So, you know, suggesting that seeing people with mental health issues is a concern um, isn't really something that I like to hear. So I'm excited for this project um, and we'll be supporting it. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Baxley. Yeah, thank you. I'll be supporting this also. I think to the point of outdoor use, um, maybe a suggestion uh, for the architects to make that as easy as possible. It looks like there is a way to scoot to that side yard without going through the front door next to the lift. And if the, they could consider that, I think it would be easier for residents um, and make that space more accessible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Baxley. Anyone else who has a comment? I will also add that um, I am uh, I'm excited for this and I also appreciate the applicant uh, coming back with a different proposal. Um, and um, and I, I do also believe that um, anyone with any kind of health condition deserves a good place to live in. So. With that, a motion has been made and seconded um, and seeing no additional discussion, um, I ask that the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Caprini. Aye. Ford. Aye. 
Farber. Aye. Grayer. Aye. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. President Smiley. Aye. There are 10 ayes. Thank you. Uh, and that motion passes. If you have any further questions, you can uh, speak to uh, city staff. OK, well, uh, moving on to our next discussion item. That is item number 11, 3331 Hennepin Avenue. And staff is Andrew Friends. Good afternoon, President Ismaili and commissioners. Before you today are four land use applications to allow the construction of a new four story mixed use building at 3331 Hennepin Avenue, containing 11 dwelling units and approximately 600 square feet of office space. Next slide, please. This property is an interior lot of just over 5,000 square feet. Property is currently occupied by a single family home. Uh, to the rear, there is a uh, public alley that the lot has access to. There is a significant grade change on the site with the front of the property adjacent to the street sitting approximately 13 feet above the rear of the property adjacent to the alley. The property is located in the neighborhood mixed use future land use category and the corridor four built form district. This portion of Hennepin Avenue is a designated goods and services corridor. Next slide, please. The applicant is proposing to construct a new four story building with 11 dwelling units and just over 600 square feet of ground floor office space. The building would include a small tuck under parking garage at the rear uh, at the basement level accessed off of the alley with two parking stalls plus an additional uh, tandem stall. The building would have three full levels fully above grade plus a partial loft mezzanine level. Next slide, please. Due to the grade change and the height of the main floor above the natural grade at the rear, the basement level does meet the definition of a story under the zoning ordinance, while the partial mezzanine level um, on, the, on the top floor is not considered a story under the zoning ordinance. So it is, it is a four story building under the zoning ordinance, those stories being the basement level and the three levels that are fully above grade. The property is currently zoned R3 with the corridor four built form overlay district which allows for multifamily uh, of this scale, uh, but does not allow for office uses. The applicant is seeking a rezoning to the OR1 district in order to allow the proposed office use, uh, retaining the corridor four built form overlay district. Next slide, please. In addition to site plan review and the rezoning, the applicant is also seeking two variances to reduce the front yard setback from the established setback of approximately 20 feet to 15 feet matching the district minimum front yard and to reduce the minimum width of a drive aisle to allow the garage as proposed, which would require uh, vehicles using the garage to back out into the alley. Two public comments were received regarding the applications, a letter from the neighborhood organization that was attached uh, to the staff report when it was published and an email from a nearby resident that was included with the comments that you received earlier today. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning and both variances based on the findings as written in the staff report. And I'm happy to elaborate more on those uh, specific findings if there are questions. Um, just speaking generally, for the rezoning, the proposed OR1 uh, zoning district is in keeping with the applicable future land use guidance for the site, um, which is neighborhood mixed use, and the project as a whole is in keeping with the built form guidance of corridor four. Next slide, please. For the yard variance, staff uh, has found that practical difficulties in complying with the ordinance do exist um, due to the depth of the established front yard and the character of the surrounding area. As shown here, the adjacent home to the south uh, from which that established front yard setback is drawn is set back approximately 22 feet from the street, further than any other building on the block face. The majority of the buildings on this block face observe front yard setbacks between 10 and 15 feet in depth and reducing the front yard setback to 15 feet, matching the district minimum uh, for lots with underlying residential or office residence primary zoning in the corridor four um, would be in keeping with the character of the immediate area. Next slide, please. For the variance to reduce minimum drive aisle width, um, staff found that the width of the lot and the grade change on the site together create a practical difficulty in providing a full width drive aisle. 
The property is too narrow to provide a single loaded full width drive aisle while complying with the parking and loading landscaping and screening standards. And in addition, um, providing a full width drive aisle would require either variances to reduce the side yard setbacks for um, an enclosed parking area or the construction of large retaining walls for an open parking area. Um, the use of the, of the proposed parking garage with uh, just two regular spaces plus a third tandem space would also be consistent in, in intensity with parking areas serving one to four unit buildings, which are not required to provide maneuvering on site. It would be in keeping with the intent of that provision in the ordinance. Next slide, please. For site plan review, the project does require alternative compliance for window coverage on the first floor west elevation, as well as for materials on the west elevation to increase the maximum percentage of metal panel. Um, if there are qu questions on that, I can elaborate further, um, but staff is recommending approval of both uh, needed alternative compliance requests as described in the staff report. As proposed, the project does also have two issues that would be addressed through the recommended conditions of approval. First, uh, the project does include three proposed one bedroom units that do not meet the minimum unit size requirement of 500 square feet. Staff has recommended as a condition of approval that all units with less than 500 square feet GFA be configured as efficiency units. This would give the applicant the option of either adjusting the demising walls to enlarge these units slightly to meet that 500 square foot threshold or to keep the unit sizes as proposed and reconfigure them as efficiencies rather than one bedrooms. Second, the building as proposed measures 42.1 feet in height, but proposes a five foot side yard setback. In this zoning district, buildings less than 42 feet in height are required to provide a five foot setback uh, on the side yards, while buildings between 42 and 53 feet in height are required to provide a seven foot setback. Staff has recommended as a condition of approval that the building be lowered to remain below 42 feet in height. This was the applicant's original intent, um, but there was some uh, confusion about how height um, is, is calculated. The effect of this proposed condition would be that the height would need to be lowered by about two inches to bring the building into compliance with the side yard setback requirements. With that, staff is recommending approval of the four applications subject to the conditions listed in the staff report, and I'm happy to address any questions. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation, Andrew. Um, does the commission have any questions for staff on this item? Any questions? Okay. Well, not seeing anything coming from the commission, I will now open the public hearing on this item. Is the applicant here to speak about this item? If so, please press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address and please continue. John Green. Is John Green on the line? If you are, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name, address, and well, any additions to add to this item. And you may need to unmute your phone as well, separately. Okay, well, our first person registered to speak aside from the applicant is Alex Meyer. Our, if you are on the line, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name, address and comments. Alex Meyer. Hello, my name is Alex Meyer. Hi. And I live at 3332 Gerard Avenue South, which is directly across the alleyway from the proposed project. And um, I did submit some written comments um, earlier today, which is already in the uh, commissioner's board packet. I've got a couple other comments that I would like to make, uh, having had a chance to look at some things a little bit more in depth. Uh, one of the items that I did address 
in the uh, my original uh, mailed in comments was the fact that I have a feeling that this um, project is taking advantage of this OR1 classification by putting an office in the structure. And in reviewing the floor plans, I find it very interesting that that office contains a full kitchen and full bathroom with showers and is actually uh, larger in size than the one bedroom unit. So it would seem to me that it would be very easy in the future to eliminate this office and put in another living space. Uh, the other thing, the advantage of having the office is allowing him to construct 11 units on this lot that was originally a single family home, um, which in fitting with the 2040 plan, I believe there was a emphasis put on creating more uh, fourplexes in the area and uh, servicing families. Uh, so I, now with this thing also being said that the one bedroom units don't meet the one bedroom unit thing and now we're getting into more efficiencies than that and I just find that the volume of people that could be living in this building uh, could be as many as with 11 units 22 people. Um, I don't know if anyone, everyone likes to live in efficiencies in that as a couple in that, but it just, it just seems like it really isn't, it isn't a very real, realistic plan uh, from the standpoint that already uh, parking has already been removed on the west side of Hennepin Avenue. Uh, so there's only parking on the east side of the street in front of this, this home currently. And the other thing I found interesting in the uh, application that was submitted, the person was saying they would not be applying for a um, sign permit for the business. And I find it very curious that someone would be having a business or an office and would not want to have some kind of sign identifying the business and being a business there because it's supposedly this really nice residential looking structure. Um, so like I said, I live across the alleyway. Um, the currently the alleyway, everyone in the alley has to either back out into the alleyway or in my case and my neighbors, my adjacent neighbor, we have a shared driveway between our two garages. So we're able to back out of our garage before getting into the alley. Um, because this does have a 13 foot grade change from the front to the back that is pretty much impossible to do um, any kind of um, major parking unless they were to go and potentially expand their basement, which is not a full basement underneath all the structure to add additional parking spaces in there. Uh, the other thing concern I have is they have really in their elevation that they show they're um, exiting out into the alleyway. There is a, it looks like a double car garage door and then a single uh, pedestrian door. And my concern too would be with these 11 homes in there, where are all the trash cans and recycle cans and compost cans gonna be stored? Uh, one response I got back when I asked the question of the planners was that this would be a commercial building and they would be using the large commercial dumpsters. And I don't know how they would get out of there, that basement, with there being a two car garage there and cars parked in it. So other than, I guess my most um, curious objection in that too is the height of the building and the alleyway and I'm not sure, but I would sure like someone to clarify the issue of the balconies that are there in the code as far as it needing to be set back from the edge of the building and the additional five feet from the side lot set back. Uh, those are my concerns and I'm hoping that there are some other neighbors uh, waiting to speak and I will let them speak. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. 
The next person who's registered is Mar Mark Bradby. If you're on the line, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name and address and comment. You may also need to unmute your phone. Is Mark Bradby on the line? I see that Mark Bradby is online. Again, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name, address, and your comment. Okay, we will come back to that. The next person who's registered is Kevin Riley. If you're on the line, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name, address, and comment. Hi, this is Kevin Riley. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, hi. Uh, yeah, sorry, we had technical difficulties earlier dialing in, but um, I'm calling, I'm the applicant for the, the project, the 3331. Henderson Avenue South, and uh, thanks for taking time to review this. Um, I guess I'll just give a quick background on um, who I am, who our company is. We're a small family owned uh, property management firm with apartments, uh, primarily in uptown area and then um, neighboring suburbs, so Richfield, Bloomington, Golden Valley, and looking to uh, hopefully, um, if this is approved, construct a uh, residential property with a small office for uh, for myself here on this site. Great, thank you. And um, I think we had John Green's name as applicant. Uh, so I apologize that we didn't get to you sooner um, on the list. No, that's, that's fine. It's John, John Green is with AWH Architects, um, does the architect on record for the project. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for uh, for your comments. Does uh, does anyone in the commission have any questions for Hello? the applicant? Hello. I apologize. This is Mark Bradby here. I've been on the call the whole time, and I did speak at the beginning of the call. Oh yes, yes. Um, I apologize. Can you just give I us couldn't... one second. I'm so sorry. I sorry. I'm uh, back on. Anyway. Yes, perfect. Uh, I'll. I'll get to you in a few seconds, just making sure that no one in the commission has a comment or question for the applicant. Uh, commission, uh, President, I do. Um, this um, is Keith. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner. And I, I can't get, uh, there is something that's blocking my entire chat screen, so I have to just interrupt here. Uh, I'm wondering if the applicant has a response to the last speaker uh, and the, uh, all these uh, the comments that he made. Yes. I, I had to drop off and redial in there for a minute, so I may have missed his, the entirety of his question. Would you would you be able just to to recap that quickly, please? Do you have the list of those comments, Commissioner Ford? No, there I do few, not. Yes, uh, I know there are a few different comments, and maybe other commissioners can help me uh, remembering all of that. Uh, comments about uh, the. Um, Basically, the alleyway, the parking, the um, trash uh, situation with the with the the shortened uh, width and gosh, does anyone else can anyone else fill in the blank? Well, there uh, there was the issue of the um, apparently oversized office um, as in, uh... yeah, oversized office and also no signage. Um, and uh, for the office and then concerns that the office would be converted to a home. Oh, okay, I can try and tackle those. So um, <laughs> I guess I'll start with the, yeah, I'll start with the, with the trash. Um, I think that's when I dropped off. Um, so yes, we would be providing uh, trash and recycled containers stored within the, uh, within the underground garage space so they would not be uh, on the exterior of the property or stored in a visible manner from the alleyway is that was that what the question was uh, 
Regarding more or less? I, think, I believe so. I think it was about the size of the um, trash uh, cans and everything. I think also the, the question related to so how you're going to handle this with a you know uh, the typically those um, those commercial units involve uh, a, a truck uh, picking up those big uh, cans and flipping them over the top of their head to the back. Um, so I mean this I, I think he the, he was talking about how, how would it be arranged in this case given the small space available. Sure, I guess I can speak to, uh, I, I don't anticipate that we'd have um, typical like two or three yard containers on site. I, I'd envision more so the traditional 50 gallon containers um, that are rollable by hand and then um, likewise would not have to be dumped up and over a truck per se, but rather just uh, lifted in the back, um, which we, we, we have to deal with with some of our other properties as well, given the space constraints on the alleyway. Um, so I, I don't envision having large dumpsters that would need to be lifted at height in the alleyway. Commissioner Ford, was there any other part of that that you were looking for clarifications? Not, not on the, uh, the the issue of, of trash. I, I, I am curious about the issue of the size of the office and the potential for that uh, being converted at some point. And I don't know if uh, if uh, if the staff have some comment regarding that. Uh, what you know, what the what uh, um, uh, controls the city might have over that. Um, staff have uh, said that they can respond to your question. Uh, Andrew, please go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Ford, um, I believe that the uh, the the. Uh, person who was commenting um, was concerned that um, the rezoning was allowing more dwelling units than would otherwise be permitted. Um, I think it's important to note that um, the rezoning from R3 to OR1 does not allow for more zoning units, or I'm sorry, for, excuse me, more dwelling units on, on the property. Um, they're uh, under the, the corridor four built form overlay district. Um, there is not a limit um, strictly on the number of dwelling units here. Um, if the applicant wanted to in the future um, convert the ground floor space from an office use to a residential use, they could do that um, by obtaining a building permit um, to change the occupancy of the space. And as long as it met the minimum requirements for a dwelling unit, uh, which it looks like it, it could with very minor changes, um, they they could make that change. Um, whether it's uh, zoned R3 or OR1 um, wouldn't have an impact on that, uh, but the rezoning to OR1 allows for the office use, whereas the current zoning district would restrict them to purely uh, residential use. Thank you, Andrew. Did, that an did they answer your question, Commissioner Fort? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I have other people on in the queue uh, from the Commissioner. Commissioner Marwa. Hi, um, my question was about the, the balcony size. I noticed it went from five foot to four feet and my dear Commissioner um, Luke Kapir would want me to ask how is that because she always said you needed five feet for a chair and a table outside on your balcony. So I just wanted to ask that question. Can the applicant respond to that? Yes, I uh, I believe that was, and John, who's the architect, John Green, could chime in too if uh, he had more um, feedback on that, but uh, more clarity rather on that. But uh, I believe it was in response to uh, comments from neighbors during the neighborhood meeting um, to decrease the uh, the size of the balcony and the intrusion, the potential intrusion of um, privacy. But I, I don't recall off the top of my head if that was exactly when the change was made or not. And I'm not sure if John Green Hello? is actually on the line. Yes. Hello. Hi. Is you that, can hear me. Is that John Green. Yes. Hello. This is John Green. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. 
No worries. Did um, you hear the question? I did, yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you. John Green with AWH Architects, 12 East 25th Street, Minneapolis. Um, so the balcony width of four feet is, is tight for a balcony, but we found that it was very important to provide access to an outdoor and private space for those units. And with with the right furniture, um, and you know the the four feet width will be able to accommodate a very small amount of basically small folding table and folding chair. The demountable aspects are really important for utilizing a narrow balcony like that. Um, so we were intent on providing that space for those residents of those units and, um, you know, balancing the requirements with zoning and um, the massing of our buildings. So if I can quickly add on that, I um, I like that you guys are including balconies. I think it's important as well for that, that outdoor space. Um, I would just, I think the five foot you know, if you don't have them big enough, people will end up, you know, hanging out on the steps, which also overlook the neighbors. That's what we used to do in Chicago when you didn't have big balconies. Everyone would just kind of hang out kind of on the stairs um, overlooking. So I would, I think the five foot as I have to, you know, again, remiss from hearing um, Commissioner Lukavira say it so many times how important that is. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Marwa. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. I think it's probably best for staff. Uh, just in response to the letter that uh, the South Uptown Neighborhood Association submitted. Um, you know, first the the letter commends the project team um, for uh, working with the neighborhood and making modifications that they didn't specifically mention the balcony, but that may may have been one that they asked for or are referencing in this letter. Um, they also praised uh, the two building design um, and the sustainability elements, uh, including the preservation of mature trees and the addition of a solar array and uh, native plantings. Uh, but their concern that they mentioned at the end um, is that they say that you know, they basically have a preference uh, for the massing of, of um, buildings and the height to be oriented uh, toward Hennepin rather than the alley. And then this was the second time uh, since the approval of 2040 um, that it's been the inverse where the massing has been oriented toward, you know, toward the back instead of toward Hennepin. Um, so they, you know, recommend uh, for future projects that, they, that the emphasis be on Hennepin. And I just want to ask, you know, kind of on behalf of the neighborhood, I guess, if, if they want to um, pursue that change, like how, how would they, they go about that? Like, um, like, I, I, and you know, um, a, a question before that would be, you know, did we have policies that kind of pushed um, the applicant to um, orient it toward the back? Like, um, is is that something that the existing um, plan is is actively causing, or was that in the applicant's choice? Um, and if if they want to change it, how they, how would they go about it? So those are two different uh, questions. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Meyer, uh, thank you for that question. Um, I did have a, a good uh, follow up conversation um, with Scott with the neighborhood organization um, regarding that that comment and did put him in touch uh, with Jason Wittenberg over on code development um, to, to hopefully have have some additional conversations. Um, I, I think here in this case there are um, you know a variety of factors that are that are somewhat unique. I think. Um, in the case of this project, as well as the other project that um, that Scott uh, was referring to in, in that letter, um, you have a grade change where the, the alley and the um, adjacent lower density residential properties to the east sit below um, the, the, the commercial corridor, and in the case of both of these projects, uh, Hennepin. Um, and so the, any decision to um, concentrate mass at the at the back of the property has sort of a uh, an amplified impact on on neighboring properties just due to the um, 
the the grade change that that are that that's on the site um, both here and, and at that other property. And I think also here is is kind of a unique circumstance where we have a um, a designated goods and services corridor that has a uh, a mixed use future land use designation, but has existing residential zoning that has a required front yard setback. Um, and so in this case, you know that the applicant um, is requesting a variance to reduce the front yard setback. Um, and and as as written in the staff report, you know staff staff is supportive of of that variance, but they're still you know they're still providing a a, a setback um, and and our our ordinance by by calling for a front yard setback um, and having a smaller rear yard setback is to some degree um, you know in, incentivizing um, in this case you know mass further back um, on the property um, as far as. Uh, you know, potentially pursuing a change to the ordinance um, to address um, this this concern or this uh, this pattern that the neighborhood is noticing. Um, certainly, working with um, Jason over on our code development team uh, or or the city council um, would be the the avenue forward um, to pursue a potential change to address that. Thank you for that, and I think specifically to the front yard setback requirements that we have. I, I think that's something that. Um, you know that that neighborhood in particular and um, others throughout the city might want to look into advocating for changes for because I think it um, the the front 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 yard setback doesn't make a whole lot of sense on really busy arterial roads like Hennepin Avenue. Um, so yeah, I, I think that um, it the variance that staff have recommended for that uh, makes a lot of sense. So I'll support that. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Caprini. Oops. Hi, everyone. I'm just curious um, about the trash um, and recycling bins. How many of them would this property need? And um, the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. I think it was last name Green. He mentioned that they were going to be on the, the bottom level. So, and I, I realize it, it's an, uh, apartment complex so obviously you'd have someone managing um, those things but I'm, I'm just curious how many trash recycling bins would there be so this is, is the applicant yeah, go, I, go ahead yes go ahead yeah sorry uh, I can take that um, you know I guess I, I I can't say definitively for sure but uh, at a 24 unit building nearby that we own and manage we have two two yards rather two sorry one two yard trash receptacle one two yard recycle receptacle for 24 units um and i envision that that since this is you know less than half that size that we would have 50 gallon um roll off bins stored inside accessible from the alley with uh, with a key fob that the recycle company trash recycle company uh, has on their truck. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Marwa. That that was one of my questions that uh, Commissioner Carini just asked. But the other one is just um, I kind of I really like this project. The orientation of it makes sense to me. It reminds me a lot of um, this type of density projects in Chicago that would also be in neighborhoods behind it with single family homes. So it doesn't look out of whack for me. Um, I think it also right now, just given that it is single family homes on Hennepin nearby, um, the density and kind of that feel over. Uh, over the neighborhood might look more apparent, but it is the goods and services corridor and that street makes sense for this type of density. So I just want my comments on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Marva. Commissioner Baxley. Thanks, I, I, I do like this project uh, as well. And I think um, the massing takes a creative approach to this level of density. I, I guess a question, um, and I'm kind of fixated on the trash too. I, I, I <laughs> making sure that that can stay inside, that it has a secure spot. It appears if it's inside, it's just um, it's in the parking area. And so as long as smells and garbage next to one's vehicles is okay, but maybe a look at that. 
my other question was um, the central stair. It appears that those are um, completely open to the exterior all the way down into the garage. And I wonder if the applicant could just confirm that for me or does it hit some point where it becomes enclosed before it goes into the garage? Hello, this is John Green speaking. Hey, John. Hi, um, so I'd love to address that comment. It is a uh, completely open egress stair and with the associated open circulation or egress balconies in the building code terminology. So when that stair um, tops out, if we're starting at the top, we designed it so the roof of the Western structure extends to provide some coverage overhead for the stair itself, but it is open, uh, no walls, no shaft walls there going all the way down into the basement level. And we're providing um, floor drains in the basement for the inevitable water and um, snow that would reach that level. So on top of this, um, designing an open egress system tied into a couple of our design goals and also our performance goals for the project. It, it is something that is not as typical as double loaded corridors in our area. And uh, we were taking riffs off of some more historic apartment buildings in the Twin Cities um, and other projects around the world that we admire that utilize this open circulation as a way to um, provide a little bit more opportunity for access to daylight and ventilation in the units and also to decrease the carbon footprint of conditioning common areas like corridors and vestibules and so forth. Um, one thing I, I wanted to chime in on just a little bit earlier when I wasn't able to speak, sorry about that, um, is our sustainability goals for the project. Uh, it's been a driving factor in a lot of design decisions that were made. Um, we're pushing pretty aggressive sustainability uh, building performance uh, that starts with a completely electrified building. Uh, we're not bringing any new fossil fuels onto the site. Um, some of the other items that were noted previously, like the uh, solar, solar photovoltaic array on the roof. Um, additionally, we're proposing a, a geothermal um, heat pump system. Um, so conditioned space is something that is very sacred and keeping things that can be on the exterior unconditioned tied into our design and, and building performance goals. No, I think I appreciate that very much. Um, I'm mostly curious. So the so the basement, the bike storage, everything that's just conditioned space then that's not heated. The so in the basement the um, there's a rear portion to the west. Okay. And so if you're looking at the drawings, there's a double That's door a that goes double into doors. that western portion. Okay. So that be area finished. will be heated. Yeah. Yep. Right. That area will be. So that includes building infrastructure, um, some storage areas for the residents, and um, and associated geothermal equipment. And so once we get to the east into the parking garage area, bike parking, um, stair, elevator access to the upper levels, that will be unconditioned. Great, great. Um, I think lastly then, I, I so I, you know, I, I envision these this sort of connective tissue, these um, quarters doing double duty. That's um, in some of these units, that is their porch uh, as well. And it looks like um, some have, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's formal, but you've articulated the edge of that uh, different, you know, on the second floor, different from the third. Um, 
and uh, it appears maybe some of the units um, don't get access to that wider spot to put a table or chair. Was that intentional, or how, how do you th could you just talk about this sort of use of the? It's not just circulation. That's actually places to be outdoors. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And so those spaces don't belong to any one unit. And okay. the areas where you see an expansion in the width of that circulation pathway, we've the design team is talking about those as as eddies in a stream. So providing a little bit of release along that pathway, like you said, where people could come out with a couple chairs and enjoy a beautiful day or provide a little bit of release for people passing back and forth to pull off with a, a neighbor and have a quick conversation as they run into, run into each other along the circulation pathway. Um, but it, it's correct that in that interstitial space between the two primary buildings that there there isn't exclusive um, use rights for any one resident that's more um, the 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 building residents space to share as a circulation pathway and also um, areas that allow for a little bit of a gathering to happen along those corridors appreciate it one last quick question on your array. Do you know what your what your anticipate? How, how much coverage do you get from that array in terms of energy use? What's what are you anticipating? Um, I so that is I'm pulling up my stats here right now. Bear with me just for a second because I don't want to get this wrong. Um, so we're looking at about a 25 kilowatt okay. array. And the information came from Sundial Solar. We've partnered with them on several solar array projects. Um, everything from a, a large solar canopy at Edison High School in Northeast to some park board projects. Um, so they have been advising us on the, the sizing and the orientation of the proposed system. So it's of a certain size. We don't necessarily understand how much of the energy use it may or may not supply for these units. So as far as the energy use goes, um, in order to uh, we we've been following several different um, performance methods from passive house to um, net zero building. We're not pursuing any certification, um, but once we get into the net zero conversation, that's where it starts to illuminate what we would have to do to completely offset yeah. all of that use. And um, at this point, I think it would require about, it was a 8,500 to 9,000 square foot system to reach a true net zero with yep. the solar energy produced on site. And that two building um, massing that we're proposing for this project wasn't the the greatest impact on our potential solar generation, but we were balancing that with other design guidelines that we were following, including um, trying to break up that massing as, as was referenced in the neighborhood organization's letter. So we're doing the best we can with the surface area of our roofs and also balancing the, the profile of those roofs. Um, that's something that's uh, more um, in line with the types of structures, gable roofs that we see in the neighborhood. Terrific. Yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't meaning to pin you down, but I, I think it's important to understand because I, we're going to encounter this 
more and more in the sort of balance of uh, form making energy production um, sort of go hand in hand. So thank you again for your efforts here. Thank you, Commissioner Baxley. Any additional comments or questions from the commission for the applicants? Okay, seeing none, um, I'm going back to um, Mark Bradby. I apologize for keeping you waiting, uh, but please That's go okay. ahead with your name, um, address, and comment. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. It's like it's like one of those nightmares where you stand up to speak in front of everyone and you're talking, but nobody can hear you. So anyway, I apologize for the, the technical hitch. Uh, my name is Mark Bradby. I live at 3335 Hennepin Avenue. I've been here for 11 years and I'm uh, involved with the neighborhood and run kind of block get togethers every year. And, you know, we, we love to welcome both the longer term residents um, of the neighborhood to those parties as, as well as um, the significant number of renters we have in the neighborhood. So, you know, I'm really, my posture is a, of welcoming new neighbors and I'm really excited about uh, this innovative design that's been put forward. And I won't talk about all the things I like about it, except to say, you know, I'm a year round biker. So I love all the store bike, the bike stuff. I like the solar panels. I put solar panels in at my house too. Um, I'm gonna talk about just a couple, a couple uh, pieces of feedback where I hope you will consider voting against this this time um, and then uh, getting, getting a new set of plans that address a few of the neighbors' concerns. Um, I think the, the biggest one is the, um, the setback variance, which we did, I attended the meeting with the neighborhood council and the request of a variance from seven feet to five feet um, didn't come up there. So it wasn't, it, we, we weren't aware that there was a variance request there. Um, the staff or, or, or the, the document that staff put together for this, uh, this project said that the roof line is um, in line with other buildings in the neighborhood. And that is not true. You know, whether this is 42 foot six inches or 41 foot 11 inches, it's going to be significantly higher than other buildings in the neighborhood. And as an example, my, I think my average roof line is at 25 feet. Um, there may be an apartment building across the road where the roof line is 28 feet or 29 feet. But at 42 foot, this building is gonna tower over the neighborhood. And on the alley, um, which is you know, 12 feet below grade and on the front, the, um, the building height is gonna be, I think 56 feet um, to the average roof line. And it's gonna be uh, 60 feet to the peak. So you know, with that in mind, with this, um, uh, large building that is being placed in the neighborhood, I respectfully request um, maintaining that seven foot setback re requirement on the north and the south of the building, and also maintaining seven foot setback requirement at the rear. And, you know, if um, the, other, the other thing, piece of feedback I've heard from neighbors is with these balconies, um, whether they're four feet or five feet, um, can the setback be to the edge of the balcony and not to the edge of the building? So um, that's the request for the committee. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to give feedback and sometimes you see things that are built and you kind of wonder, how did that ever get approved? And um, I'm for density, but I do think that in the future, if people are driving by and they see these single family residential homes that are two stories, and then you, you have a four story um, 
huge structure, I think people will wonder. And so this is our opportunity to not to do away with the project and not to say not in my backyard, but to um, give feedback and then maybe just adjust it so that it, it fits in with the neighborhood. Um, my other comment is with materials. The materials are um, uh, steel siding and kind of an industrial look, whereas the neighborhood is, um, is you know, more wood siding or brick and other apartment buildings, whether it's the Lander property that was proposed at 35th and Hennepin or the new project that's going in at 33rd and Girard, they've made an effort to kind of preserve the character of the neighborhood with brick and with traditional materials. And I feel like, uh, you know, this, this building would look at home in the warehouse district um, or, or maybe in a neighborhood in Chicago. Um, and, you know, one of our responsibilities as stewards of, of the, um, the built environment for future generations, again, is to preserve the character of neighborhoods. So again, I feel like putting a kind of, you know, a steel sided, in slightly warehouse or barn looking industrial building into a neighborhood where there's brick and there's wood and there's more traditional materials. Um, I could imagine people driving by in the future and saying, who approved, like, how did they do that? It just looks weird. And so um, I look forward to being a good neighbor and I love innovation. I love the solar, I love the bicycles, um, but, I would respectfully um, request that you vote no and uh, that we get a new plan back um, addressing the trash concerns. Um, we have multifamily in this neighborhood and there are there are either large dumpsters that go up and over, you know, the two yard containers that, that Kevin mentioned, or else if they are the 55 gallon roll, roll out dumpsters kind of like the city provides to residents, then they usually have either one per apartment unit or perhaps one and a half. Um, so sometimes like a fourplex will have three um, trash, trash dumpsters and three recycling dumpsters. And so when you scale that to 11 units plus, plus an office, um, I can't see how that stuff would fit into the the garage or be easily accessible if cars are parked in there. Um, and then the final comment for, for the, the design team, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I do a lot of geothermal systems. And in general, you have to be able to access the well field and I don't see a lot of site. It, it feels like you're gonna have to put wells under the building, which um, they won't be accessible. So. I'd question whether a geothermal system is possible on this site. I love geothermal systems and I'd love to see one next door, but to, to conclude, I feel like this is a really cool project, but I feel like it's it's still getting baked. It's, it's half baked and I look forward to, to kind of seeing a new iteration that, that addresses the um, concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I'll, I'll get back to Commissioner Meyer. <clears throat> One second. Is there anyone else on uh, this call? Because uh, this uh, actually this concludes our list of registered speakers. Is there anyone else on the call who uh, maybe didn't uh, register in advance to speak to this item, but would like to um, speak about it right now? If there is anyone, please press star six to unmute and then continue with your name, address, and your comments. Anyone else who would like to speak Hello? to item 11? Yes, hi. Hello? Hmm. Hello? Thought I heard someone, yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi. Yes. I, oh, hi. Uh, uh, my name is Thomas. Uh, Thomas go ahead. Rex. 
Uh, my name is Thomas Reck, and I live at 3340 Girard. Um, I just had a, a couple of additional comments that have been, uh, I think, hinted at, but not really fully explored. Um, one of the issues in the neighborhood uh, regarding the balconies is not really the setback from the alley, but more so the loss of privacy to those, those of us on the Girard Avenue side. Uh, this building is clearly going to be looming uh, over our backyards where the current house does not uh, right up against the alley such as it is um, and at the uh, four-story height it, it really is just sort of uh, I think going to be quite an invasion in, in our private backyard spaces. Um, another concern I had that uh, was the first uh, resident speaker, Alex, who's right behind the property. I think he brought up a number of uh, good points that sort of show a uh, kind of a disingenuous um, planning process by the developer. Um, and I was a little put off by how few of Alex's concerns were A, addressed, and B, even recalled by you as the group to address it. So um, I thought they were great concerns and they're just, they seem to be just kind of lost and not considered any further. Um, particularly um, this first floor office space, the size was not the issue. It's the fact that it's an office space with a full kitchen and a shower, um, which again speaks to sort of the disingenuous part of the planning for this building. Um, the, the last point I'd like to make sort of along that line as well is the uh, original presenter uh, this evening for this plan was talking about the limited parking space, the two units, and uh, noted that the two parking spaces were, quote, consistent with one to four unit buildings in the area. Uh, ignoring the fact that they're trying to build an 11 unit building, but comparing it to one to four unit buildings. Uh, again, sort of just highlights that um, there, there seems to be a little bit of a smoke screen uh, getting put out here uh, regarding this building. So um, like Mark, I, I, I am in favor of progress and development. It's a wonderful neighborhood. People should be able to enjoy it. Uh, and, and it should be affordable to everyone. Um, but, you know, I guess maybe one more point is I'd be curious how many of, of you council members have actually been to this site to see it. it, I, I, it, it it's difficult to imagine squeezing this building in this little space. Uh, and I think you would see how low the alleyway is um, it, to really envision what a monstrosity this building will appear to be and and how invasive it, it could be and, and locking out light. I mean, it, it will create probably a sunset an hour earlier for those of us on, on, on Girard, um, just because it's so much taller than the building that's already there. Um, so I, I invite you uh, council members to come out and actually look at the space before uh, you know giving your thumbs up approval. Uh, it, it, it really, I think, to Mark's point, does, it just, it's nice, but it doesn't fit here in this configuration. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Is there anyone else on the line who didn't register in advance who would like to speak to this item? Please press star six and then continue with your name, address, and comments. Anyone else on the line? Okay. Well, not hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing on item 11. Any additional discussions or questions by the commission related to this item? Commissioner Meyer. First, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question of staff because I was perplexed by the second to last commenter. Um, 
I only see one setback variance, and that's for the front yard setback from 20 feet to 15 feet. Is that correct? Are there more? Uh, Commissioner Meyer, uh, th that is correct. This, the applicant um, has not requested and, and uh, is not seeking a variance to reduce the side yard setbacks. Um, as I explained um, at the beginning and is, as uh, outlined in the staff report, um, the, the, the setbacks here are based on the height of the building and 42 feet is the cutoff between a five foot setback being required and a seven foot setback being required. The applicant's intent was to propose the building um, as being just under 42 feet in height, um, but the applicant misunderstood um, exactly how height is defined in the ordinance. So as proposed, the building is 42.1 feet high. Um, con uh, condition number four, the uh, recommended condition of approval number four on the site plan review um, application, would require that the building be reduced to less than 42 feet in height. That would be about a two inch uh, reduction in height. Um, complying with that condition would bring the property into compliance with the required side yard setbacks. Okay. Um, I think there's a very clear case for the variance for the front yard setback. Um, you know, that orients it more towards head of an avenue, which is what the neighborhood organization asked for in their letter. Um, responding to the last commenter um, in regard to the office space, I think that was already clarified. Um, if they want to change it from an office space to residential, they can do that and it's okay for them to do that. There's not a limit on how many residential units can be there. Um, and if they want to keep it as an office, it's perfectly appropriate to have a shower there. Um, you know, the last two commenters said that they um, support, you know, cycling. Um, if the employees of this that are using this office want to be able to take a shower after biking to work, that's a good thing for them to be able to have access to. So those um, don't seem like appropriate reasons uh, to reject this. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and put the motion on the floor. Um, I move to approve items A, B, C, and D uh, with the stated conditions consistent with staff recommendations. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Uh, motion has been made. Is there a second? Commissioner Olson. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Caprini, did you want to make a comment now? I was just going to ask if staff could repeat um, the use for the office and Commissioner Meyer already did. So okay. that was it. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Caprini. Is there any additional uh, comments or discussion by the commission on on this item? OK, well, seeing none, uh, I ask the clerk to please call the roll on the motion. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Caprini. Aye. Ford. Aye. Marwa. Aye. McGuire. Aye. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Aye. Weezy. Aye. President Smiley. Aye. There are 10 ayes. Thank you, that motion passes. Um, again, if you have any additional questions, further questions about this item, you can always reach out to staff. Um, that concludes all of our public hearing items. Are there any announcements from the staff at this point? Thank you, Commissioner Smiley. Uh, just a reminder that our Committee of the Whole meeting is on Wednesday instead of Thursday this week, and it starts at 6 p.m. It's the joint click meeting. Um, so different day and different time, but hopefully you can all make it on Wednesday at 6 o'clock for Committee of the Whole. And that's all I have. Thank you, Kimberly. Kind of stole my line. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so, um, 
with that, uh, we have completed all the items on the agenda for this meeting. Um, again, uh, and, and with without any objection, I declare this meeting adjourned. Again, as Kimberly mentioned, the next uh, meeting of the commission as the committee of the whole uh, as a committee of the whole meeting is this Wednesday at 6 p.m. This is May 12th and uh, the next uh, full meeting of the planning commission is on Monday, May 24th. And with that, thank you everyone and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Good night everyone. Thank you.